Former Fed Chief Paul Volcker is worried that all the new banking regulations will not help prevent another financial crisis. Writing in today's Washington Post, Volcker declares, quote, the structure that failed us in anticipating and responding to the emergency is largely still in place. So are we in trouble? Let's bring back our panel. Matt, is he right? Of course he's right. Uh, too big to fail, in my view, is one of the biggest and most insidious problems contributing to the financial crisis and aftermath. We still have that. We've just enshrined that into law. Every new round of regulation, financial regulation, that's supposed to save the system never does. Sarbanes-Oxley was passed in 2003. That was supposed to prevent another financial crisis right? like Enron. How did that work out for us? Well, so, and, and Sabrina was also supposed to the biggest banks less powerful. In fact, they're more powerful than ever. They're more concentrated than ever. That's right, and I agree with Matt that we absolutely did need some re some regulations and some changes. We don't want to ever see the American taxpayer have to you know bail out Wall Street again. But one of my concerns is that you know Paul Volcker is someone who has tremendous faith in the federal government, and in his new proposal, he's really talking about concentrating much more of that regulatory um, power in a way that concerns me. And I think that one thing that, as Matt points out, we don't only want to be looking at the size of banks, but the complexity right. of their activities. And I think that's something that maybe is overlooked with Volcker. Adam, what about the Volcker solution. He wants to put everything under a kind of umbrella, super government agency. Yeah, well, what I just heard, I would twist it a bit. I think Paul Volcker is um, proposing this because he does not have faith in the U.S. government and the myriad of different regulatory agencies, which sometimes duplicate what they're supposed to be doing, but then don't do it. So if you were to streamline the, this process, make it easier for the banks to comply with one regulator or maybe two regulators, as opposed to what they're trying to do and navigate and figure out how to get around it, it might be a better solution but for Matt, everybody. But Matt, isn't that for example, what Homeland Security was supposed to do after 9-11. They were right. supposed to combine the FBI and the CIA and all these agencies. It, you know, it didn't work out too well. People are always trying to centralize in Washington uh, to fix the previous act of uh, centralization, and in very rare circumstances does that actually help. All right, let's move on to Time Warner and Comcast. They're having all kinds of trouble with their $45 billion merger. They're going to be sitting down with justice officials on Wednesday, but could their biggest problem be that they're just too big to change as quickly as all those small companies trying to cut their cables. Adam, are these big companies behind the curve? Well, they're behind the curve in one sense. I mean, eventually this business model is going to continue to not make as much money as it does, but that's still coming down the pike. They're going to make money one way or another, David, whether they merge or not. They're going to raise the fee you Ooh. and I pay to have Internet connection. you got to connect. So even if you're a cord cutter, you're still going to need Comcast or Time Warner Cable with their wonderful customer service, you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> in order just to get your Hulu or your Netflix or uh -huh. your Apple TV. Just a little bit facetious on that good a service bit. of those companies. Sabrina, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Look, regulators are, imper are particularly concerned about that bad service, which is interesting. But I think that the Time Warner Comcast sort of model, it might be what's more of a con problem. Consumers want that flexibility. They want that on-demand status. They want to be able to do things as they, as, you know, when they want it. They want to watch things. And I think that these big companies are, are so far behind. So I agree that they do need the Internet connection, but it seems like making a larger consolidation of power may not be the right move. Right. Well, Matt, call me crazy but I, I have a feeling that that okay I'm crazy <laughs> that there's some small company out there maybe working in their basement maybe not but some small company that will come up with a solution that these big guys are gonna miss in it was order to cut cables and yeah exactly there right. are some suggestions but maybe you could do it in the ether without any cable at all of course if you think about the track record of antitrust regulators and technology companies are we still under the thumb of Internet Explorer I kind of think that <laughs> uh, you know no, they're they're killing killing that. Of, new things that we come up here. And, when, and when I look at the Time Warner Comcast merger or attempt to merge, I think of AOL back about right. 10 years ago, right? And there was a lot of people saying 15 years ago that AOL Time Warner was going to be the death of free expression on the Internet, yeah. which was rendered right. ridiculous within about a half an hour. The, the thing is, if we, uh, if we uh, uh, look at regulation like this as in with net neutrality, what it does it enshrines these old incumbents yeah. and, it, and it denies the new competitors who have the crazy gee whiz technology to leapfrog and root right around them. We should be using antitrust to break up local monopoly arrangements with these mm. companies so, not to break up their mergers. So, hey, David, Quickly, Adam. so, so the yeah, reason that this merger won't go forward is because in the future the combined company would let you watch but in a two to four hour window time frame when your show would arrive and you'd never know and then of well, course it would never arrive. We don't know arrive. the technology that will be there two years from now. Quickly, final word, Sabrina, go ahead. 
Yeah, and it's interesting that they're still fighting over merging together. While meanwhile, you know, competitor Verizon just announced yesterday a new plan that would allow sort of more of an a la carte system. It's still behind some of these other internet programs like Hulu or Netflix or Amazon Go, right. but but it is a step in the right direction. So we're gonna have to see the progression. It, they're a little they're a little slow. Got you, Matt Welsh, Sabrina Schaefer, Adam Shapiro. By the way, if, you, if Sabrina looks familiar, it's not by coincidence. You can catch her and myself with a cast of Forbes on Fox, a show I'm sure you've seen many times. It's every Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time on the Fox News Channel, our sister network. Meanwhile.